So this next picture is the bow tie. Okay, well, we've actually already did this. We talked about this yesterday, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. The big difference here is that we can pick up the angle. All right. Um, so if we just look at this picture, so just like yesterday, we have the midpoint of SK and the midpoint of EA. So being the midpoint of SK means that SN and NK are the same. That comes from the midpoint of SK. Okay? We also know that EN and NA are the same. So that comes from the midpoint of EA. And this is where we stopped yesterday because we didn't know that SE and AK were congruent. So we couldn't just do side, side, side. However, uh, this is a bow tie. So we actually know that angle N on either side is congruent. Okay? So if I call the angle on the left angle 1 and the angle on the right angle 2, then angle 1, whose name is properly SNE, is congruent to angle 2, whose name would be KNA. All right? Because they're vertical angles. All right, so what else do we need to know to say that these triangles are congruent by side angle side? Nothing. All right, it's done. We don't need to know anything else. We're good. All the information was given to us through those sentences. Uh, now, remember what I said yesterday about, about um, each statement only gives us one piece of information. Okay, um, I said like N is the midpoint of SK and EI, so this gives us one thing, okay? Um, but this time it gave us two things, and that's because the sentence is compound. All right, it's a compound sentence. Um, because of the word N, this is actually two sentences. N is the midpoint of SK, and N is the midpoint of EI, okay? So each sentence gives us one thing still. It's just that it's compound, all right? So uh, there's two givens in the one sentence. Uh, same thing is happening with the bisecting statement. Oh, I don't have the picture. If I said um, SK and EA bisect each other, then it would produce the same setup, okay? Um, so midpoint or bisector, we get the same thing, okay? All right, try this proof on your own. Let's see how you do. All right, so here we go. We've got N is the midpoint of SK. So you should mark SN and NK equal. That's this first one. All right, so why is that? So it's the midpoint. Okay, and then we have N is the midpoint of AE, so that's going to give us AN and NE. That's the third line. AN is congruent to NE. I guess I kind of wrote that in reverse, didn't I? What I wrote was correct, um, but if we write it this way, then I keep the triangle on the left on the left and the triangle on the right on the right. Doesn't matter, but so that's another midpoint. How many P's in midpoint? Apparently two today. So the top one is the midpoint of SK. The bottom is the midpoint of AE. It's not important to write that down, but it's better, right? It's better. Um, and then, of course, S and E and A and K are congruent. So S and E, the, the angle, S and E is congruent to the angle A and K. I didn't write the number in that time because you don't have to. Right? Both are correct. Right. You can put in numbers if you want. You can use the three-letter angle names. Just don't call it angle N. N, N congruent to N doesn't work. Okay? Um, so S and E and A and K. 
And th this means then that we look at our triangles for congruence. So if I start at S and then go around the shape, I have to match. So S is actually on the side marked one, see? So that means I know I need to start with K because K is also on the side marked one. And then we'll lap around the same way. Hmm. Keep touching the, there we go. I keep touching the eraser button while I'm writing. Um, so this means that triangle S and E is congruent to triangle K and A by side angle side. Okay, questions on this? Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. All right.